okay, so the first presenter is going to be Daniel Dufour presenting algorithm walkthrough and how to visualize a large GeoTIFF on your web map. Hi, uh, can everyone hear me? Yep. Okay, great. Um, thank you all for coming. I'm honestly a little surprised to see so many people in a talk about GeoTIFFs. It's, it's really great to see, and it's really great to see people uh, uh, seeing the power of GeoTIFFs. Um, what I'll be going through today uh, is um, the algorithm used to uh, display a cloud-optimized GeoTIFF uh, using the library uh, GeoRaster Layer for Leaflet. Um, and uh, doesn't use a server, it just directly pulls from the, the GeoTIFF file and, and puts it on your web map. And what better way to tell the story of an algorithm but through a fairy tale? Um, so, uh, far away in the land of GeoTIFFs, uh, GeoTIFF files uh, at their most elemental level are just uh, ones and zeros. Uh, like a lot of image files, uh, they'll have the metadata in the beginning, uh, and then they'll have the, the pixel values, the RGB and other sort of values um, after the metadata. And, and this is really important because uh, you can learn a lot about a file by just reading very little from the beginning. So I, I don't want to take away the magic from the, the next presentation, so I'll kind of go over this slide quickly. Um, one of the authors, um, or the, the main author of GeotiffJS is presenting after me, and um, I'm sure he'll have a lot to say. Um, but uh, the, the magical array that, that we use um, in the, the algorithm uh, is the, the GeotIF uh, from array. Um, from array buffer, excuse me. Um, and then you basically, the array buffer is sort of like ones and zeros. It's, you just pass that into uh, this um, function from array buffer uh, after you've installed GeoTIFF, and uh, it will return a JavaScript object uh, with that data. So uh, let's, let's go back in time um, before cloud-optimized GeoTIFFs existed. Uh, you would see a lot of the data um, in a multi-dimensional JavaScript array. Um, the, the first dimension uh, would be your raster band, um, and that could be like red, green, or blue. Um, as many of you know, and I'm sure find any random person here and start talking about satellites, and they'll, they'll tell you all about the different types of raster bands. There's near-infrared, infrared, um, lots of others. Um, and then uh, in the, um, the geo raster library, we'll then put it into a, a tabular format. So it will go uh, row by row, uh, and then uh, column by column. And uh, these are the, the values of a GeoTIFF file. So like uh, 26 is the value for the, the top uh, left pixel. So an important distinction, again, so many illustrious people here. I'm sure uh, um, Ivan Sanchez uh, maintains Leaflet. He can explain this better than I can. Um, but uh, for your web map, it basically uh, grids up the, um, your map in the browser in a, a bunch of different tiles. Um, there you go. So the, the next step is to decide how much detail you want. Um, everything comes at a cost. So this image on the left, it's an extremely grainy image. It's going to load very quickly. Uh, where this image on the right is much more high definition and it's going to load um, much more slowly. So each tile, and if you remember the, the tiles are uh, the different parts of the world um, for, for your web map, yeah, those tiles. Um, each tile, uh, you fill it in with a canvas. Um, this is the code. Uh, I'll be like tweeting and sharing out the presentation later, along with like the whole source code. Um, but you basically just use Leaflet's uh, DOM util create uh, canvas. Um, if you're using open layers, you could probably create a canvas and um, 
another way. Uh, and then uh, you're going to, your canvas is really like a canvas. It's what you're going to paint your, uh, your GeoTIFF onto. Um, so your next uh, sort of step in the algorithm is determining how many pixels from the original GeoTIFF can, can fit into a tile. So um, this is uh, a tile in um, sort of uh, Leaflet's uh, uh, front end uh, tiles. Um, so you see that's the, the blue box. Uh, so you sort of have to figure out how many um, pixels, how many values from the original GeoTIFF can I fit into this box. Uh, and you can um, do it uh, sort of step by step, uh, first looking at how many pixels um, will fit into this area from uh, like from uh, like horizontally and then vertically. Um, yep. And and the the key uh, thing is pixel width and pixel height. Uh, those are metadata that's found inside your GeoTIFF file. One of the the important things and. Like coding is just a series of mistakes, and so uh, <laughs> in the beginning I didn't do this step, and so what was happening was um, I was only trying to display something that was more like this, but I was getting this much data, and so um, you you really only should be getting the data that you need. Um, you if you had like a smartphone, um, well maybe not a smartphone, but like a really old TV, you wouldn't want all of the data that would be needed for a high definition because it's just not going to display. Okay, so um, you have to decide the size of your samples and screen pixels. Um, so a screen pixel is the actual pixel that's, that's um, on your uh, device that's, that's being rendered. Um, and you uh, have to, using the sort of like, um, the resolution, you're, you're sort of deciding um, for each of these little grainy squares, uh, how, how big should that be? How big should our samples? Um, because if we have a, like a gigabyte raster, you're not going to want to take samples. You can think like statistics, right? Like you sort of uh, want to just uh, sample your GeoTIFF file um, and just take what you need. So um, the, the Actual um, code is a little more complicated because it has to deal with projections, uh, but uh, in essence, you're you're just um, you're sampling uh, um, row by row, column by column. Um, you're uh, picking out values from a, a GeoTIFF file. So um, let's give an example here. So it's it's just going uh, row by row, column by or sorry, yeah, row by row then column by column, um, and just saying, hey, I'm in this square now. Let me go to my file and grab the value. I'm in this square. Let me get the, the value, um, not from your file, but from the, the JavaScript object uh, that we created in the beginning. Uh, determining color is fun. Uh, I don't have a, a great uh, answer here. Um, I would recommend providing uh, a user a choice to specify their own function for determining the color, um, because in the absence of that, you're sort of just guessing. Like, is three uh, bands really RGB? Maybe it could be something else. But uh, it, so it's usually best if someone explicitly says how they want the color defined. Um, but you can see here, this is when there's only one band. Uh, you just figure out like what is the total range of values and then just sort of scale that uh, and convert it into black and white. Uh, so, so this step's fun. So you've sampled your data so you know what the values are that you want to display but you're not quite sure where to display it yet. Um, this, uh, this tile has one, two, three, four, six samples. Um, uh, so in order to find um, this location, so you can start drawing the sample, you would just take the width of a sample and then multiply it by the number, uh, the, the column number. Um, and so you would, you would take maybe if each sample was uh, eight pixels 
and this was like, um, you know, was that like column five, you would do like uh, eight, eight times five, uh, and then you'd start drawing there. Uh, okay, so we're just using um, the can HTML canvases just fill rect. Um, that, that's what is, is drawing this square. Okay, so now for the, the main show. Um, all of that was like in memory JavaScript, so there's a limit to that because you don't want to send a gigabyte to the user every time they want to like load your map. Um, so cloud-optimized geotips are awesome, so how do we visualize those? Well, it doesn't actually, oh, so what are cloud-optimized geotips? I'll go over brief, briefly. Um, they're intimidating but awesome. Um, it requires a little extra work, um, but when you have great people at EOX and Fabian deciding to do that work f for everyone, it's great. Um, so uh, they're, they're usually quite large, but they could be like a gigabyte. Um, they're internally tiled, so what that means is that actually inside of this file, it, the data is actually cut up into squares. Um, so that sort of tiling idea that you've seen in like web maps, uh, that's, uh, it's actually tiled inside of the file as well. Um, and you can pull out exactly which part of the file that you want um, using HTTP range requests. So sort of the point of it is that we have four sort of uh, tiles in this image. Um, you have one, two, three, four. Um, the, the red is the tile from the original GeoTIFF file. But if I'm just painting this uh, canvas here, I don't need to get the data from here and here and here. Um, so that's one of the great things about uh, cloud-optimized geotiffs is you just grab the data that you need. Um, so then uh, the, the other sort of point is that um, once you get the data that you need, uh, you need to uh, identify pixels based on the top left corner of the, the internal GeoTIFF tile and not of the, the whole file. Um, okay, so uh, that's it. Um, happy to take any questions. Thank you. Hi. Uh, do your library does your library under reprojection when the uh, in, uh, the input raster is not in Web Mercator? Yes. Yes. Uh, so it handles um, WGS Thank you. Uh, so the, the question was what happens with projections and what if it's not using Web Mercator? Um, so it's, it's a little different than like maybe you're thinking of like if you have WMTS tiles or like you have a, a bunch of tiles. So in this case, you're pulling directly from the, the GeoTIFF file and then reprojecting on the fly. Um, it is not reprojecting uh, all of the data. It, when it makes the sample, it reprojects that point into the sort of the coordinate system of the GeoTIFF file and then pulls that, that data out. Um, I hope, hopefully that answers your question. Sorry. Other questions? Um, I was just wondering uh, about cloud optimized geotiffs. Like, is there a kind of size limit to that? Like, could it, you have like you know a ten gigabyte geotiff, or would it be better to split that up into smaller ones? Or yeah, uh, I think the the questions about cloud optimized geotiffs, how big can they get? Um, I don't have a, a great answer for that. Like in the wild, I've seen them. Um, I, I was I have an example, but I, I think we're running short on time. Uh, you can easily do like a gigabyte. Um, 
I'm I haven't tested it for for hire. It'd be great to get some people to test that. I know that um, some people have said that for storage and retrieval reasons on S3, like if you make them too big, there is some sort of limit, and maybe that's something you're familiar with. But I don't have a a great answer there. Hi. Can can you handle VRTs that contain GeoTIFFs, or is it only just access directly to a, a, a cloud-optimized GeoTIFF? Uh, so this depends on the GeoTIFF JS library, and that does much, most of the significant coding for the library. It's able to take advantage of overview files, but currently I believe it's just limited to uh, uh, GeoTIFF files and, and overviews. Just so you know, I'm not blowing smoke. Here's an example of the um, 800, I think it's like 800 or gigabyte uh, GeoTIFF, uh, cloud optimized GeoTIFF file um, being rendered. I think it takes just like two megabytes to, to render this. So how did you find the performance to be? Because uh, um, I think you are doing you are painting one pixel at a time with a rectangle or something like that. So maybe there are better ways to display an image than one pixel at a time. Was that an issue? Um, it, it hasn't been an issue. I, it, it hasn't been an issue um, because I have so many other issues. <laughs> uh, but but maybe. Uh, uh, I, I would love some help benchmarking that and seeing if, if we can improve that. I, I think that's sort of the big uh, debate or narrative in contrast with like WebGL and if you could trim down, this is all based on CPUs, so it can run on IE and stuff, but if you can trim down that time, then maybe it can compete better with GL solutions. Thank you.